This presentation summarises advice to candidates for those preparing for the MRCPCH examinations. I hope you find it useful. Overall, it's important that you look after yourself, that you use effective study skills, that you establish the boundaries of what each examination covers, and that you map and track your progress accurately. Also, make use of clinical opportunities. We all know that um, studying is more effective when you're well rested, when you're not hungry or thirsty, when you've been had adequate exercise and fresh air, um, and when your stress levels are not too high. Think of the Yerkes Dogs Dodgson curve. However, um, all too often it's easy to, to let the pressure of work and revision examinations um, get on top of you. So do think about these things and try to make time um, for looking after yourself. Your examination preparation will be so much more effective if you do. Um, obviously, the way that you approach this is very much up to you, um, but I would suggest that putting time aside for sharpening the saw is very, very important. There's a huge amount that's been written in the literature over the last uh, 50 years or so about effective study skills. Um, and some are so much more effective, um, hundreds of times more effective than others. Um, so it's very sad when you see people using less effective study techniques. Um, and some of the ones that you, you may have been using over time um, have been found by research to be less effective. So I just want to highlight the most effective ones um, and contrast them with the less effective ones. Um, first of all, it's very important to focus um, when you're doing revision. Um, it's very easy to have music or chatter or the TV on in the background distracting you, and that reduces the effectiveness of your study. Secondly, um, it's very important that active um, study methods are used. By this I mean rather than just rereading a topic again and again and again, um, closing the book and actively trying to recall the main points. This is much, much more effective um, in embedding things and uncovering um, uh, misunderstandings and, and uh, lacunae in your knowledge. Self-testing um, is a very effective way of studying um, and um, has been proven to, to boost um, recall quite significantly. It's very easy to get in the habit of passively highlighting words in a book um, and so the whole page goes yellow or some other colour um, and this is actually relatively ineffective. Making sure that you understand a topic well um, and you link it um, to uh, your clinical work and other subjects is a really, really effective way of allowing you to recall information from multiple different perspectives. Um, it's very sad when you see people glancing at the feedback that's been carefully constructed on questions um, and not reading it terribly carefully because that can be the key to unlocking um, an area of misunderstanding. Spacing practice rather than cramming um, is much, much more effective. So in other words, you study, um, first of all, in a fairly leisurely kind of way when you're a few months away from the exam, um, and then you study um, uh, at intervals, the same topics again, just to refresh them, make sure they're still uh, wired in um, to your recall mechanisms. Interleaving practice rather than being a bulk practice of a particular topic, but interleaving practice of different subjects can be very, very helpful. Um, there's no point in going over your very strong um, subjects over and over again. Um, uh, it's, it's worthwhile focusing on your weakest subjects um, and the ones you find most difficult. Um, in other words, eating your frogs first. Now, um, the subject of clinical paediatrics um, it will be a lifelong endeavour for you. Um, I've certainly found after 40 years on the topic that um, there's always new things coming up that I've never heard of before. Um, if you think about the um, the changes in genetics and microbiology and vaccines and, and, and basic sciences, they're always moving the boundaries of what you know. Um, so paediatrics as a clinical subject 
it's very easy to go down little rabbit holes that end up being fairly unproductive um, and not very useful for your exam. Um, so I think um, it's very important that for the exam itself, um, you first of all define the breadth of the exam by using the syllabus. So these are the topic areas you need to cover and then the depth of the, the, the area you need to cover um, are defined by questions. So in other words, um, if you're scoring 80% in, a, in a, uh, a group of MCQs on a particular topic, then there's really no need to spend more time on that topic because you know it well enough. Um, it only covers a subset of basic sciences rather than having to go through the whole undergraduate curriculum again. There's a whole lot of stuff related to gerontology and uh, ischemic heart disease and so on that really are not, not relevant to paediatrics. Um, but other areas you do need to know very well, like for example, um, genetics um, and um, uh, areas of microbiology, um, development, growth and so on. So focus on core information um, and typical cases and recognising typical cases. That's what's really important for the exams. Now, in terms of the um, mapping and tracking of your progress, the MRC-PCH um, uh, uh, exam team have put together a syllabus for you um, which divides um, paediatrics into 25 topic areas and then groups those by the um, the examinations that you have to cover. Um, so for example um, they're grouped by um, your foundation and practice, by your theory and science and your applied knowledge and practice um, and each of those goes into more depth and moves away from um, the theoretical side of things to the more clinical side of things as you go through from, from through the examination sequence. There's also one for clinical uh, preparation as well, so it's worthwhile going through those and making sure that you're um, using those to map your progress. Um, so identifying areas where you're weak. Um, when you're doing questions, monitor how those map to your um, syllabus so that you can see how it is, how you're progressing um, in relation to, to the syllabus. Now, in terms of opportunities, there's loads of opportunities um, out there for you um, as you're doing your clinical practice. Um, I just want to um, highlight a few areas um, in which you can, a few ways in which you can make, make the most of those opportunities. Um, first of all, um, identify knowledge gaps. Now, as you do your clinical practice, as you manage patients, there will be questions that arise in your mind. Now, some of those are of clinical importance immediately, and you'll ask your registrar about those, and you'll probably remember about those. But there are also other questions which are probably less vital at the time, but are important to identify. So just take a little notebook with you, note down what those questions are, maybe just you know, two or three words, whatever, just to remind yourself so you can go and look up the answers to those questions. Because then what happens is that the, the knowledge that you gain by reading up around the topics are linked into the patient that you've just seen. So they're much easier to recall in the future. Um, also, what you'll find is that by going through the syllabus and going through your basic textbooks, you'll see that this, there are some areas of the syllabus, particularly your, on your undergraduate textbooks, um, some areas of the syllabus are really poorly covered in the basic textbooks. So you'll then have to read up around those in your more detailed textbooks like Nelson. Don't, for heaven's sake, try to read Nelson from cover to cover. You'll just kill yourself. Um, but take an undergraduate textbook, use that as the basic stuff, and then write in the margin or stick in pages or you know, use electronic notes or whatever to, um, to, to boost um, that undergraduate textbook in the areas where the syllabus says it's important. Um, learn actively. Um, this is really, really important. So um, don't be passive about your knowledge. Try to think all the time, what would this particular piece of knowledge be useful for? How can I apply it? Okay, often what I found very useful is seeing a patient, then you, 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 um, you think you know most of, you've done a re reasonable job with them, but you go and read up about it and you realise actually you could have done tactile vo vocal fremitus when you listen to that pneumonia, you forgot to do that. So you go back to the patient straight away and do that and see if you can identify that particular sign at that time. 
okay? Because that means that you're applying the knowledge straight away, you're embedding it straight away. Um, use undergraduates asking you questions um, to identify areas of your ignorance. Also, when you're talking to registrars and, and middle grades, they will be giving you clinical experience as well, which you can then um, try to take advantage of. Um, get plenty of, of feedback um, on, uh, from your middle grades and consultants. Ask questions on your handover round, the end of your handover round, maybe just ask the consultant or on the ward round, ask the consultant a particular point that, uh, that's come up. Um, maybe wait to the end of the ward round or just come out with those two or three specific questions about the patients on the ward round. That can help just to boost that, add a little bit of knowledge with every single ward round so that you're continuously improving, you're continuously getting feedback, you're continually getting better um, and learning more and learning in more depth and learning clinically applicable knowledge. Okay, that's um, all I wanted to say really, but all the very best um, for your exam preparations. I hope the questions that I and others have written on the MRC, on the on examination website, are really helpful in your preparations. Um, please send us feedback if it has been, or if it ha hasn't been, and if we can improve in various areas. And all the very best of, uh, uh, of luck uh, in your exam preparations and in your future career.